College Jersey Championship Wrestling presents Uncensored. Here as always with the incomparable Veda Scott Veda. We are starting off with bloodshed. You heard MLJ, it's barbed wire warfare. With Let us know what you think, and if you're a fan of the original Uncensored event, you will understand that pretty much every match tonight is going to have a little extra flavor to it, a little extra spin on it. Absolutely. Special food for every match, but this match was basically occurred after our last event, which was after hours two, when Slade attacked Matthew Justice after he lost the match. And basically, Mance Warner challenged him to this match tonight. And it is going to be violent, it is going to be brutal, and we're bringing it for you folks watching on YouTube. We're just having a moment here for uh, old Mance's entrance theme. There is a song. tried to muscle Mance back into the barbed wire. But Mance is a big boy too. Oh, he's bringing the fight. He's got those cowboy boots. He's all set. I'll tell you what, this is uh, going to be brutal here. And again, it was one thing for Slade to take on Matthew Justice. It was a pretty oh. chaos, chaotic match. Now Mance there's some barbed wire. There's some, there's what I don't understand tools. about Slade is like, clearly he wears a, he wears a t-shirt when he's mowing the lawn. Clearly. <laughs> But he takes it off here to fight in the barbed wire. 
That is a full-on maniac. That is fully unhinged. Yeah, no, that, that man is not working with the full belt. Oh! Uh, and oh, Mance, Mance is in trouble. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is going to be... He may get stuck here with the T-shirt oh. on the bar bar. You're right about that, Nick. Sometimes clothing can be a danger in these matches. It does get you stuck, although I guess it's better than your, your skin. Well, the thing is, though, then you're if you're stuck, you're then at oh. the mercy of someone like a slave, as you're seeing right here. If your T-shirt's stuck on there, you can't move, and he can just beat on you. That's and basically what you're seeing. You're right. And we've seen it. We oftentimes see in matches like this where the official has to step in and physically snip someone away from the barbed wire. I don't think Slade is going to allow that level of, of a reset. I think he's just going to be relentless. In addition to the barbed wire around the ring, you'll see we have a barbed wire chair, at least one, some barbed wire boards. Yeah. yeah, this is just our opening match. This is how we're starting out on Sunday. <laughs> slap for slap and old Manser sent Slade's bare back into the barbed wire and Slade doesn't seem all that phased by no. it actually. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Oh Lord. Open palm strike to the chest and now a headbutt. And again, Manson knows what he's doing here. Slade, maybe not so much. And this is, look at this now, running the barbed wire across the oh. top of his scalp. Listen, as a bald man myself, a little cut on the top of your scalp is agonizing. I can't imagine barbed wire. Mance is just essentially grating the head of Slade. He's putting a slit on the top of his head like a piggy bank. Oh, man. And now he's got a bat with barbed wire. Oh. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Slate's fighting it. Oh, and now oh. it's into the head. Oh, man. Of Mance Warner. Look at this. Oh. oh, my God. He sacrificed cutting up his arm just to bash Mancher in the head with that barbed wire bat. And Slate almost seems surprised that that hurt. Like, it, it's barbed wire, my man. Let's watch this. Oh, God. And the replay, you just see him with his form just bashing across the bat so to stick that barbed wire across the head of Mance Warner. And now Warner is just, there's a stream of blood across his forehead. I mean, this is probably going to go down in, in JCW history as the most violent match, at least this far, that we've ever seen. Well, and of course, it would involve Slade, who, as we said before, we have, we've essentially been terrorized by Slade for a very long time. And I, my, it was my hope, honestly, that tonight Mance Warner was, would be here in JCW to finally take care of that problem for us. Well, oh, oh, look at oh, that. Oh, that do it. He just talked to chair. Oh, no, 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 Wait Slade. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute here. Somehow that seems to have fired up Slade. Oh my God, look at this. They're just going at it. Just these forms and he just keeps coming at you. And coming at you. Hopefully, Manchin can finally put an end to this. The menace that is slayed here. And look at this, rubbing the barbed wire from the back right across the head. My God. Unbelievable. I mean, this is just brutality. Oh, I thought Mance was maybe going to clean up the building. This is a new venue for us here at JCW. We Absolutely. want to be able to keep it. Oh! Catch the red in the face. Along with whatever goodies were on the floor. Yeah, pretty much. And now with a chair to the back. Oh! Right to the kidney. Look at the, oh, right to the head again. And oh. that, that opened up that cut on the top of Slade's head. And Mance Warner also covered in blood. Now just lobbing these chairs back in the ring. Oh my goodness, look at this. Now he's lifting up the ring skirt for more weapons, it looks like. He found another chair to toss into the ring. Oh my God. I'm gonna be honest with you, Vader, I feel terrible for our ring crew because after the, to clean up this mess after, after this chaos, it's gonna be something else. Now Mance tossing Slade back into the ring and you can see Slade now also covered in blood. Oh man. Man, Mance are, Mance are building something here. Two chairs and it looks like a 
barbed wire door, or a, a table approximation. A little makeshift uh, table, barbed wire table. And look at Slade. Slade is just staggered. But he keeps going. He just keeps going. He's like one of those like horror movie monsters. It's like a Jason Voorhees or a Freddy Krueger. You name it. <laughs> Michael Myers. Ooh. Look at this. And they're just going at him. And somehow Slade is still just giving it right back. And look at the jabs here by Vance Warner rocking Slade. He's got him down to one knee. Big bionic elbow. Again, to that open wound on the skull of Slade, but Slade, big jump slam through the door. Oh, man. And as you were saying, Veda, you could easily get, with your clothing, you can get stuck in that barbed wire. Look at the amount of the strand of barbed wire here. Oh, now, no man still in it. Now imagine, as we see a replay here, Big choke slam oh. by Slade right through that makeshift door, barbed wire table. And you know, a choke slam like that through a door has a potential to be a match under in any circumstances. That, look at Mantis still stuck to the barbed wire and he's still kicking out. And you gotta figure, Veda, I mean, when you're stuck on that barbed wire and it's stuck to your skin, to your clothes, it's even more painful to lift up your shoulder before three count. Imagine trying to kick out of a pin wrapped up in barbed wire like that. And now Slade with the chair and just beats him over the back. And Slade truly has turned this match around for himself after that choke slam. That's another barbed wire wiffle ball bat. Oh my God. I thought he was gonna stomp on it right there. That actually would have been a smarter move than what he did with his forearm out there. Slade, maybe Slade going for this other barbed wire chair. Oh man, a metal folding chair wrapped in barbed wire. And he is just, look at this. <laughs> just circling around. Mantra who's crawling and now gets caught. Look at this. Oh, and that chair is stuck. It's stuck to the tank top and one would assume the, the flesh of Mance Warner and Slade relentless. Bloodthirsty, stomping that chair into the skin of old Manser. And not even not even going for a pin here, Nick. Not even trying to win the match or end the match at this point. No, he, he just wants, Slate loves to see his opponent suffer. He likes to see the, the grimace on their face, the, the, the pain, the agonizing. To see them in agony. And now look at this. He's talking trash. He's, and look at this, he's about to choke slam him again, it looks like. Yeah, maybe back onto the remnants of that. Oh no, it's the chair. The barbed wire chair, but Manser. Little eye poke there. Gets him out of trouble, at least temporarily. Trademark Mans Warner. Oh, oh. No. oh no, oh no. Oh look at this, a power slam right on the barbed wire chair. Unbelievable. Still not enough to keep Vance Warner down, and we got a shot there, Nick, from behind. You can see all the small cuts, the scrapes. Watch this replay. Watch the the velocity of this power slam. And he's trying to pin him while choking him, it looks like. Unbelievable. Just the unorthodox style of uh, Slade. You just don't know what to to expect out of this man. And uh, I wasn't sure, I couldn't tell till we saw it, that barbed wire chair is still underneath Mance. He's still laying in it. And oh. Slate now is just pacing back and forth. Look at this, he's, he's, he's like uh, a predator, just going after his prey. He's wounded. Oh, now he gets <laughs> caught. He gets caught on that barbed wire chair. And now, a barbed wire wiffle ball bat here. And he is on the attack, this Mance Warder. He is out for revenge for himself, for Matthew Justice. And now, goes for the big running knee, catches him on the side of the jaw, hooks the leg. No! Unreal. He got up at one. He got up at one. What is it going to take to finally put down Slate? That is the big question. We are asking ourselves, the fans here, and of course, Mitch Warner. Oh, wow. Slate at first. Caught the barbed wire chair. But 
then caught a big boot and got it right in the face. Mancher's survival instincts kicking in here. And Mance, oh, oh man. has a... Strand a, of barbed wire. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a crown almost around his arm. Mance Warner loads it up. Larry with the barbed wire. And somehow Slade kicks out. And where that circle of barbed wire was positioned, Slade honestly, he may have taken that straight to the throat. And yet he's still going. Man, Nancy's just trying to figure out what to do next. Got another, another chair set up here. Well, Nancy's this... having to, to pick through the chairs and figure out which ones are even still usable. Oh yeah, which ones? That one's a little rickety, but. At least it's not wrapped in barbed wire yet. It looks like he's going for another barbed wire tour there. Yeah. Setting up another contraption here, Mance Warner. But he's gonna need to work fast here, Nick. We've seen Slade just relentless. He's already starting to get back to his feet. Mance using that barbed wire to just poke, poke at the head. And now he's got a headlock on him. Is he trying to maybe catch him in a bulldog? Or No, he's taking him around ringside. Oh. And just wrapping his head, passing his head across that barbed wire. Now with a big chop, punch to the gut, another chop. I think he's trying to soften him up to eventually put him through that door. As now he hits him with a big right hand. And ooh, look, he's gonna, ooh, he's trying to place him on that top turbo. You know, you got all this barbed wire there. It's, it's hard, you potentially cutting yourself up as you're trying to place your opponent on the top rope. Very, very dangerous situation, really for both of them. And now look at this. Oh my God. Maybe a super flex in mind here. Looks like it, looks like it. Oh, right through that door. And he covers with one arm. No. How is Slade still in this? Unbelievable. Unreal. As we see a replay here, big oh. super flex right through that makeshift barbed wire table, that door. And somehow, Manchin doing all he could just to get that one arm across the chest of Slade, but it's not enough. Somehow, wait a second, hold on, what's wait going a on here? What, who's oh, no, no, no! Wait a minute, someone's coming in and just went after. No wait way! Minute, this is Hoodfoot! Oh, man! Hoodfoot, wait, Hoodfoot got rid of Man's Warner and then zeroed straight in on Slade. Oh, he's looking for some revenge. He is looking to just... He nearly bled to death against Slade. Truly, and Slade was remorseless. And now, I guess Hoodfoot even going after Mance Warner, but now he's choking the life out of Slade. I, I think, Wait a minute, he's got a, he's got a blade. What is he, he's gonna, oh, he's trying to cut him? What is he doing? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now I mean, we're getting a bunch just, of officials. This is a, this and is a little stop much match. even for us. Oh my God. Yeah, he had oh my a, God. No, like, he, a, like a box cutter. It, it looked like a box cutter of some sort. It looked like he was about to just stab, straight up stab Slade. And, and truly, I think, I think it was really just a matter of Hoopa getting Van Warner out of the way, clearing a path to Slade. And for those of you unfamiliar, Hoodfoot was stabbed with a broken light tube by Slade. It, it sliced open his his arm and it, his chest. It, it honestly, it's one of the most, I, I love deathmatch wrestling, but it is one of the most gruesome injuries I have ever seen. And uh, so, you know, you can, you can understand why a measure of revenge might be necessary but Hoodfoot taking it to a whole new level. Unbelievable. Oh! Wait a minute. Now Mance Warner's all over the place. He's going after even our ring crew here. He, he wants a piece, yeah, no, he wants a piece of slate, but he's pissed off. He really is. Well, Mance, Mance, Mance upset knows what happened here. He does, but I, I, I think he's just, you know, you got the adrenaline pumping, you, you, just a lot of anger. He wanted, 
he was in this match with Slade, and all of a sudden, Hoodfoot just shows up. Well, and like we said before, this match between Slade and Mance Warner, like, put aside the, the personal vendetta between Slade and Hoodfoot. This match between Mance Warner and Slade was already so full of animosity after the attack on Matthew Justice. It was Slade's, Slade was challenged to this match, and Mance Warner wasn't even able to complete it. And I think that's what uh, Mance, is, Mance is all upset about. Obviously, Slade just wants a piece of anybody, whether it's Hoodfoot, whether it's uh, Mance Warner. The referee has thrown the match out. That match, a no contest. Unbelievable. And if you're disappointed in that result, you're thinking, that's 15 minutes of my life I'll never get back. The good news is, everyone's pissed off at Slade, which means that you're probably gonna get a whole lot more of this for a long, long time. Clean up sponsored by GCWmerch.com. While you're waiting for us to clean up this match, check out the website. You can get hats, you can get t-shirts. I'm sure you can get other things, but those are the two I thought of. Absolutely. All, all your uh, uh, GCW merchandise needs at GCWmerch.com as uh, we wait for our staff here to take down this barbed wire and just kind of clean up this mess that we've uh, seen. And let's just... Right, this is a few moments to remove the barbed wire from the ring. Shout as out to our crew. For the remainder of JCW Uncensored. Later on, we'll be seeing a full rope match between Charles Mason and the one called Manders. We're also going to see a couple of extreme rules matches. One for the GCW Extreme Championship featuring Cole Radrick against Alec Price. And we'll also see a Lucha Extrema tag team match between the Mestizos and wasted you. And in tonight's main event will be Jungle Kiona against Masha Slamovich. One on one right here tonight. And Veda, who knows now what will happen next in the next chapter of this feud with Slade Mance Warner with Hoodfoot. It's anyone's guess. Uh, our next event for Jersey Championship Wrestling will be on Sunday, October 9th. Uh, tickets and information will be available on all social media platforms as soon as it is available, uh, pretty much right after this event in, in the coming week. Uh, just look for that information uh, available. Who knows, it might be at our very next event that we'll see the next chapter, whether it will involve Hoodfoot, whether it'll be Nance Warner. Who is Slade gonna go after? You know, uh, he's got a lot of enemies. And uh, as we've seen here, it's only well, gonna get worse. Honestly, at this point, he has nothing but enemies. Yeah. He truly, like, just seems to interject himself into to every situation at JCW, and, and it's just, it's non-stop, like you started to give us a list of the people who are pissed off at Slade, try to give us a list of people who are not. I mean, it, yeah. it's ridiculous at this point. And the fact that Slade somehow still survived this barbed wire match, that wasn't enough to stop him. I don't know what it's going to take. And shout out to our crew for getting this cleaned up as quickly and safely as possible. Yeah, but I mean, I, I have to wonder again, um, you know, Mance Warner was pretty hot-headed, uh, hot-blooded. All right, it looks like we have eliminated all the barbed wire from the ringside area. Our next contest is a body slam challenge for the DDT Extreme Championship scheduled for one slam. And we are seeing uh, the globe-trotting bad boy who is making his return here to JCW and what a way to do it against the crazed wild man from West Virginia and imagine the whole point of this match is you have to slam someone the size of this in order to keep your championship and can, can you and now I know I know Joey has the extreme championship he 
is allowed to choose the stipulations for the matches. That's the whole deal with the extreme title. But how do you how do you explain this to the DDT office? If Beastman wins it, how do you introduce a course? He is the challenger. Fighting out of deepest, darkest West Virginia with an official weight of 500 pounds. This is Beastman. I mean, Beastman wins tonight. What, does he? Does he? Joey is scheduled to go back to the ET very soon. Does he? Does he take Joey's place? Beastman is so mysterious. You know almost nothing about him. How do you? I don't know. This just seems like. It seems pretty classic Joey Janela, actually. We're talking about <laughs> the potential for chaos. Yeah, yeah, this all tracks. This all works. It fits in into the master plan of Joey Janela. Unbelievable. Look at the size of this. I mean, a beast is what he is. And Joey Janela, after a successful tour around the globe. I mean, he was in Australia. He's been in Japan. He defeated two of the top stars of DDT. First, he defeated Akito to win that Extreme Championship. And then, about a week later, in what he, one of the most chaotic, uh, uh, hardcore matches ever seen and in the DDT ring. Fighting out of Asbury Park, New Jersey, with an official weight of 200 pounds. He is the current reigning and defending DDT Extreme Champion, the bad boy, Joey Janela. And don't you let anyone tell you that Joey Janela can't wrestle. Look at those rolls. That's day one training right there. Absolutely. But yeah, as you were saying, Joey's recent tour of DDT incredibly successful, and I just want to know one thing to acknowledge, and that is when are we going to see Shunma Katsumata here in America? Specifically here, I'll take him in Boonton. That'd be great. So this guy right here. All right, we got an explanation, I think. Joey told the, me he was going to go over well everything. Well, in wonderful hills of West Virginia. And he absolutely has no idea what the fuck is going on right now. When I was at, so I was at the Jersey, I was at the Jersey Shore. Calm down. I was at the Jersey Shore a couple weeks ago, and some hot Queenette walked up to me. She goes, "What do you do for a living?" I said. I'm a professional wrestler. She's like, really? I said, yeah, I'm very strong. I can body slam a 500 pound man, and now we're here. So before we start this match, I need to demonstrate what a classic body slam is. There's only one way. It's Andre the Giant and Big John Stud style is the only way me or this savage could win this contest. So come on in, we're gonna demonstrate a, a classic body slam right now. Oh, there, there they are. So you guys know what a classic body slam is, right? I've seen it on TV. You've seen it on TV? Aren't you training to be a professional? Isn't, it, isn't this one of the first things they teach you in professional wrestling? You need to teach it, Joey. The first two things we learn in professional wrestling training school is moonsault and Canadian Destroyer. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> True? Things have certainly have changed. I'm. I'm untrained and I learned a body slam before these guys did. I need you guys to demonstrate what you think a classic body slam is. That, no, 
no, no, that is not a classic body slam. That is not a, that is not a classic body slam. Show them a classic body slam. No, that's that's a Davy Boy. That Smith. is not a classic body slam. Show them. Show them a classic body slam. Classic body. I'm asking you to get this show on the road. Okay. Did he just try to chop the ref? It looked like. No, the. Okay, so Beast Man has retained the, the chopping portion of the lesson. And he roared. That's all I can say. And he roared. Okay. Here we go. Joey's going to retain his. Nope. It, no, no I, I don't. I don't. That's a lot. That's a lot. I know Joey's been working out. He's been getting in better shape as of late, but I, 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 I gonna go with no. Well, he said he could do this. He did say he could do this. And Beastman just puts him with a headbutt. Oh man, this, this, there's a lot of power here. I mean, he's not quick. He moves like a sloth. But uh, yeah, this is a good. good. This doesn't look too, oh God, an avalanche. Oh, oh, Joey, out of the way. Oh God, I was having, uh, you know. Body. Nope, nope, not, body, no, 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 no. Body slam time. Here we, nope. Here we go. I, I'm gonna go wild. Oh. I'm telling you, I just, I saw the fear of Joey's eyes in that corner and he ran for dear life. I was getting, uh, you know, flashbacks to WrestleMania one, King Kong Bundy and SD Jones, but, uh, Wow, I just, I think if Joe even survives this, then he'll be a very This is a big, oh. big dude. Oh. Joey holds on, puts up the boot. Oh, that's not gonna take the big man down. Gonna try again. He's gonna try. Oh, 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 oh God. Oh, oh God. Cross body by Beast Man. That's a lot of body. Oh, God. At least he didn't stay on top, because I don't think, thankfully, this isn't pinfall or submission because no again the only way to win this match is to body slam your opponent as was explained ex no 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 listen it was explained ex extensively before the match you know no, this least, is not gonna work at least back in the day kamala had Kim Chi to explain things who's gonna explain things to beastman i don't think the referee can all right, the fans here in Boonton are helping out. They're chanting body slam as a reminder. Here we go. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, this is not. No, no, this, this is, is not. impressive, but it's not quite. And that's not a classic body slam. Again, as was explained endlessly at the start of the match, we saw all the examples. Look at the referee is even explaining. It's up and then down. What, why is the referee trying to slam? He's trying to demonstrate. I guess, but now he may have pulled something in his oh, lap. That's it. Oh, right no. There. That's it. Exactly that. <laughs> yes, but now yeah. we may not have a referee. <laughs> that is a very big man picking you up and dropping you. Especially if you are not a professional wrestler. Like our trained oh, referee. Joey Janela on the apron. Beast Man was coming to get Joey. And. Beastman finally, finally goes down. Big kick there on the ring apron. And wait a minute. Oh, Joey's got a chair. Okay. So and outside of the whole you have to body slam your opponent rule, I mean, that's really all we got, right? I think this yeah, is that's fine. It. Yeah, this is a set. It's extreme. So it's an extreme title match. It's, 
All of this is oh. oh, double stop on the chair. This is all acceptable. This fits within the confines of what a. Uh, again, there's no uh, pinfall, there's no submission, no disqualification. As you see Watch the replay this. here, look at this, just a double foot stop right there with the chair across the midsection of Beastman, but now it's Beastman beating on the back of Joey here. And now he's raking his back. Oof. <laughs> You know, and you got to figure those are long, filthy nails. I mean, look at them. I don't know when the last time is he even saw a bar of soap. And well, a re impressive recovery time on Beastman, too. An absolutely brutal double stomp. Oh, God. And now he's beating on Joey's back with a chair. Oh, he just slammed it across his back. But once again, the only way to win this match, and seemingly the only way to end this match, is going to be with a body slam. To, to one of the wrestlers in the match. The one to the, 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 one to the referee does not count. count. Oh, God, wait oh. a minute. What, what, oh. what, what, what oh. is he doing? And the floor is trembling. I'm just going to mention this for those that are watching on YouTube. The floor is trembling right now. Oh, dear God! Oh, no! He just can't involve him. The steel chair disintegrated under Joey Janela, who was under Beast Man. Absolute carnage. Oh God, he's running around. And then just the cannonball. Oh! And then the chair disappears. And, me and Joey nearly disappears as well. And now all Beastman needs to do is grab onto Joey Janela, hoist him over his shoulders and slam him back down on the mat. That's a lot for him to remember. I'm just gonna just take a shot in the he's dark. He's gonna have the time because Joey Janela is hurting right now. Beastman with a smile on his face. As he stalked Joey here. Oh, Joey came in hard. Oh, God. This, this doesn't bode well. This doesn't bode well. This doesn't bode well. Oh, God. Oh, 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 God. Oh, God. Oh, he's catching with his lower Oh, but Joey out of the way. Beastman just cannonballed into the corner. And he came in full steam. Oh, man. Joey here. This might be Joey's best chance. Is this his opportunity to finally do it? Can he do it? Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, no. But oh. not a body slam. It's not a body slam. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. Listen, at least. How do you get, you have to body slam Joey Janela, the wrestler that you're fighting inside the ring, in a chant? Because I feel like we need those specific instructions. Listen to the credit of Beastman. At least Watch he has this. a. Watch this. Oh, oh God. Joey. <laughs> he just lands right on top of Joey. But again, to Beastman's credit, at least he has a normal wrestler's instinct of going for a pin. It's just this isn't the match for him. Well, and now he's. He's shopping underneath the ring. I'm not sure what he's looking He's shopping. For okay, well, that's a, that's a, a way of looking at it. Apparently, he's looking. It's like Kmart. He's looking for any items. And I, I have to wonder, again, with the DDT Extreme Championship, the champion chooses the stipulation. Is Joey Janela perhaps regretting choosing this particular stipulation? Oh, oh God. What is, is that a piece of guardrail? It is. And I think our fans at ringside are going to try to help out a little bit. Uh, oh, God. Oh, my God. Wow. This may go down as the most violent night oh! in JCW history. And I think maybe Joey baited Beastman into that a little bit. You know, setting up that metal guardrail. And here we go. As he's going to try to now he's trying again. Oh, I, I don't think I don't see this working. Uh, nice chop there by Joey. He rocks the big man with it. Another one and a big forearm. And he's pumped. He's ready to. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! Oh, 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 wait a minute! Oh wait! Joey, Joey out from behind. He slips out, thankfully. 
and I keep chopping the beast, man. A big forearm right there. Oh, there you go, backhand, and a big rolling forearm right there. Beastman staggered. Oh, wait a minute, Joey. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Oh my God, oh my God, oh dear God. He's in a power bump, and he just got power bump on the guardrail. And look, you can see the imprint of Joey Janela's body in that guardrail. And now, to win the championship, all Beastman needs to do is pick up Joey and body him and watch the impact. Oh God, ah. and he just tosses him right there. And you just see it bending as soon as his body hits him. Oh my God, the back of his head, his back. Unreal. How Joey's even moving is beyond me. Oh, big right hand by the beast man. And Joey's down to one knee. Oh, God. And now the beast man is climbing Where's to the top he, Where is he going? I don't know, but this doesn't bode well for Joey. Wait a minute. Oh, oh God. The beast man. Looked like he was going for a splash and Joey got out of the way. Yeah, the beast man cometh and the beast, beast man falls. And here comes Joey now. Yeah, Joey going up top. Could this be? Might be. Oh, oh God. Swanton onto the guardrail with beast man underneath, but that can't be good for Joey. Janela's health either. Then his back just hit the guardrail. Why would you do it again? Oh, God. He's just doing anything he can to to soften up, watch this. Unbelievable, Swanton right there, injures Beastman as much as himself Truly right there. Just, I think he's just trying to soften up Beastman for this body slam, but all the Swantons in the world are not going to help with this 500 pound behemoth. Oh God, series of clotheslines here by Janela. As it comes off the ropes. Oh, Beastman is down again. Uh, and, and so, I, yeah, again, if for some reason you're just tuning in, you missed a lot. But this is a match that can only be won by Body Slam. And that jump bomb was impressive, but it is not a match ender. I'll tell you what, Beastman's got a lot of weapons in his arsenal. Except the Body Slam, it looked like. And the ones well, if this goes on long enough, we might get to that. Watch this, got caught. And just gets dropped right there. Grab, catches him in midair, grabs him by the throat, both hands, picks him up. That cannon bomb just sits right out and just drops him. And now the beast man. Oh. Now he's going for another door. Oh, God, there's a door now. And he's, and he's trying he's to clear us. our fans to get out of the way. Oh, God. And he's bringing a couple more chairs in the ring. Here we go. This doesn't look good. I, I don't, oh boy. Beastman struggling to get back in the ring. That's the thing, he's been hit pretty hard, so it's, the nerves might be shot a little bit. His um, lower extremities, you see his legs shaking a little bit as he tries to get in the ring. All look, right, that's and, yeah, look at this. Beastman setting up the chairs and doors. He, might have had an eye on that earlier match today. There were no body slams uh, in the opening contest. No, so he not. did not see that. He didn't see that. And I think maybe that would have helped. More so than the, uh, you know, the practice earlier. But, oh my goodness. And now Beastman here doing something with Joe as he's climbing to. Oh. He's on the middle rope, and now he's grabbing Joey. I, I don't know what he's going to go for. He's picking him up by his hair. I mean, really, he could pretty much go for whatever he wants. The strength, and Joey, Joey knows he's in trouble here. He is fighting with everything he has. Beastman starting to fall, and Joey has the, the bone. Oh, wait a minute. He caught him in the head with the bone. And now, wait a minute. Joey with a big chop. And catches him in the side of the jaw with the bone. And wait a minute, wait a oh. minute, wait a minute. Can he slam him? He's he a body him. slam! The winner of the match, and the 
and still DDT Extreme Champion, Joey John Some way, somehow, Joey Janella retains the DDT Extreme Championship Watch without. This. A bone to the face, uh, like an animal bone, like a, yeah, a animal bone to the face. And then finally a body slam off the top, not that kind of bone, <laughs> off the top rope. And that is what it took for Joey Janela to keep Beastman down. And you gotta figure the officials, and the DDT officials back in Japan have to be breathing a sigh of relief at the no, at the news that Janela has retained his championship against the Beastman. Because I have a feeling like that would have cost him what another airplane ticket for uh, Beastman. That's a pretty sizable dude. Most airlines are not forgiving. They charge you two two plane uh, plane seats. And man, I, know, that size. I know there were a lot of people here in Boonton, and I'm sure there were many, many people on the stream who were unaware of Beastman before tonight. And they definitely know him now. Hashtag ACW Uncensored. Let us know what you think about everything that just happened. is a match. Oh, man. And we started to show off with a grudge. And the grudges continue here. This match, of course, was after the Great American Birthday Bash where we had the Buntas Battle Royal. That was the idea of this man making his way to the ring. But one Charles Mason, the, who they call the root of all evil, and I've referred to as evil incarnate, this man tried to embarrass and choke the life out of one called Manders with his own bull rope after trying to humili humiliate him, embarrass him, and toss him over the top rope to eliminate him from that bunkhouse battle royal. One called Manders, he contacted the JCW officials, the matchmakers, and he demanded, he didn't ask for it, he demanded a full rope Andrew match Jacobs. with Charles He's Mason. The boss of the plane, and you know, Nick, when I saw JCW Uncensored was coming up on the schedule, I was really hopeful that some of this lingering animosity that we have here in Jersey Championship Wrestling, it might be settled tonight, all these different stipulations, but based on the Slade and Mance Warner match that opened up the show. I think things are just gonna keep getting more chaotic here. All I know is I spoke with uh, Manders a little bit earlier before the start of this event. He was pretty worked up. He said, Charles Mason thinks he's better than me. He thinks I'm like something that's on the bottom of his shoe. He, and he tried to choke the life out of me with my own bull rope. And he said, I'll be damned if he's gonna get away with that. He said he's gonna beat him from pillar to post. If he has to drag him to all four corners of the ring, whatever it takes, if he has to drag him to every corner of this building, and that's what he'll do. He is the root of all evil, Charles Mason. And as we saw, Mason trying to make friends with everyone, including the children. Um, just trying to intimidate everyone, including our ring announcer, MLJ. And first, let's see here if our official can even get this bull rope on Charles Mason. He doesn't exactly play nice with others, as you were saying. Yeah, I don't think he even wants yeah, to be involved in this, but no. he's here. All right, I think he's, all right, he says that Manders needs to put the rope on first. He's demanding that he put it on first. I don't, this is Manders match. Yeah. It, it most certainly is, but I mean, he's putting it on. He wants Mason to put it on as well. And these two are just going to be tethered to each other. They are. 
And as you can see, as we have the opening bell here, the ring bell sounds, and we've got a cowbell right in the middle. And whoever gets the advantage gets to use and beat their opponent over the head or all over the body with it. And Manders has strength advantage at least, and now let's go of the rope to send Mason back to the ring again. I don't know where Charles Mason thinks he's going. Yeah. Well, if you notice, man just pulled that old uh, tug of war trick where he uh, let his opponent think he had the advantage and then let him drop. And to me, as someone who has, has watched Charles Mason just slither his way around JCW for so long, the advantage that he normally has is that he can just slide away. He can escape at any time. He causes carnage and then he just leaves to let the aftermath simmer and he doesn't have that option today not when he's tied to one Paul Manders we saw him try to get out of the ring now he's trying to get advantage with a, an eye poke and some chops look at this he's trying to chop he said look at me oh Manders is going to look at you all right and he's packing a lunch because he's going to take his time beating on him Manders is hot I mean this man was seething when I spoke with him earlier he, this is a man whose, whose pride was attacked, was wounded by Charles Mason, who just mocked him. And Manders isn't going to let that slide. That's for damn sure. Oh! Picks him up for a big vertical suplex. Oh, it's suspended. He's keeping him up there, letting all that blood flow to the top of the head. And he's holding him up there for as long as he can. And now he finally drops him. And I'll tell you what, Manders now is in full control. And this is what he was looking to do from the beginning. Go after Mason. And Mason's trying to, I don't know where Mason yeah, he's is going. trying to escape. But again, Manders has hold of this rope. And that rope is around the wrist of Charles Mason. Mason is... Oh, this is, Mason is trying to drag Manders with the rope. And look at this big right hand now. And he just drops. See, this is the thing though. Manders is injuring himself if he drops Mason to the floor. A quick tug of his arm, you could pull some ligaments. You could have some nerve damage. He could pop his own shoulder out of place. I mean, this is a very dangerous match for both of them. The whole purpose of this type of a match, this type of a grudge match, is to keep your opponent within close proximity of you. But, oh. I mean, if you toss your opponent, you're potentially still tagging. Yeah, and Manners has, Manners has the rope all doubled up, but I think you're right, Nick. It meant that he was also close enough for Charles Mason to whack him with that cowbell. And now Mason, oh, big DDT with Manders all tied up in the ropes. And I mean the, the bull rope and the ring rope, Manders is just fully trapped here. And this is the danger of a type of match like this. You get the bull rope wrapped into the ring ropes. And look at this, now he's just biting away. He's biting on Manders. Now, look at this. He gets in the ring and starts stomping away at Manders. Now, wait a minute. Manders oh. is Manders arm, trapped. Yeah, is around the top rope. He's, he's trying oh, no. to make his way out of the apron, but that might have just made things worse. Oh, no. What is Mason have? Mason, yeah, Mason following. Well, he has no choice. They're, they're only tied by Fair. only a couple of feet. And that, oh, oh. And the cowbell in hand. Charles Mason going to work on one call Manders. And now, look at this. Oh. Scraping. Oh, look at this. With the fingernails across the top of the head of Manders. I mean, Mason is just, we've said this before, he's a sadist. I mean, plain and simple. And now, what does he have planned? But Manders now coming back. Punched in the bread basket. Chopped to the chest. And a big right hand here by Manders. Yeah, 
Manders is really fired up now. And just beating on the back now of Mason. Look at this. Big chop right there. And this is what Manders, this is why Manders wanted this kind of the match, a Burrow fan. Because look at, now he's choking, the, trying to choke the life out of him. Oh! Wait a minute. But Mason! He's trying to do the same. And now stripping his shirt, could have the exposed chest to chop him. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Could we see a suplex? Oh, oh no! Reverse onto the floor! Again, this is a wood floor here in the Boont and Elks Lodge. And if you saw the way Manders landed, right away he pulled. Yeah, he, he I held saw his that leg too. and they pulled his hamstring potentially there. Again, you have that rope. Watch which this. Let's see you. if we can see what happened here. Oh. oh, yeah. So he didn't come down even on that suplex. He tried to fight it, and I think he may have made the situation worse for himself. Oh, man. And the last thing you want is to be at a disadvantage with someone like a Charles Mason. And this match is so personal, not just because of the animosity between these two men, but as with many of the matches here at, GC at JCW Uncensored tonight, Nick, this is Manders' match. He asked for it. He doesn't want to be embarrassed and lose at his own stipulation. That he doesn't. Oh, oh, God! And he may not have a choice. He just got clobbered with that steel chair. Oh, man. And Mason, now. what is he doing? He's Oh, He's sneaking back in and out of the ring. And oh, no. God. He rammed him right into, headfirst into that ring post by pulling on the on the rope. He had the advantage. He just pulled it. And now, what is he going to do here? Oh, now getting jaw track with the fans. Getting the face of the fans here. Certainly not a crowd favorite as Charles Mason, that's for sure. Not trying to go after Manders here. It looks like he's going to try to get him back in the ring. Yeah. Here. Mason now stalking his prey. What does he have in store? Oh, he just took off his belt as if he didn't have enough with the bull rope. Now he's got a belt and he's whipping him with his own belt. His own dress belt. Look at this. Oh no, look at this. He's got the buckle. He's got the buckle. And he's digging it into the forehead of one called Manders. Look at this. And look at this sadistic individual. He wants to wear the blood of his opponent. He, as he says, wear the blood of the poor. Oh yeah. Unbelievable. Oh yeah. I'm Manders is just gushing here. I'll tell you what. This is now. Look at this. Now he's choking oh. him with the ball rope. Oh, no. And the crowd trying to get behind Manders. And Manders now, out of desperation, a backdrop suplex, is finally able to free himself up here. Yeah, that is the main thing that I can gather from here, Nick, is it's less about the damage to Charles Mason and purely just getting him away from Manders at this point. Separate as well, get him as far away as you can when you are tethered to your opponent. And now Manders having a moment to recover and says, bring it on. Charles Mason, who is more than happy to oblige. And they're going at it back and forth with the forearms. And I think when the blood flows out of the head, Fanders is when he is oh. as hot-blooded as ever. The series of chops leaving Charles Mason's chest raw. And a big clothesline now with the with the bow rope in hand. And he is pumped. He is ready oh. to gain a measure of revenge as he wraps that bow rope tightly around and the I neck. Would, I would normally say that this is just a little too much, but after what Charles Mason has done, oh! Look at this, he's just biting away at Manders. Boom! And wait a minute. Mason! Mason hung up in the ropes! On the rope! Oh no! It, he's got him. He's got it wrapped around his neck. 
Manager's down. Wait a minute. He's got a slingshot. Oh. Him oh, oh, oh. And he just went to slam him. And he hung him. Oh, God. Let me tell you something. He could have pulled. He could have had neck damage the way he landed. Yeah, it, it looked like Mander. At first, it looked like Mander was having some trouble with the power slam. And it wasn't that at all, Nick. You're right. Because Charles Mason was tied up in the ropes. Mander's, though. Nick Splash. Off the top. Hooks the leg. And just, so close. and just to let the folks watching on YouTube know, as you may or may not have noticed, and unfortunately, it's a fault of ours not to explain it a little bit earlier, this is not going to be your traditional touch all four corners. This is pinfall, this is submission, this is knockout or referees uh, calling the match. Yeah, That's the only the, way this is going to go. The traditional touch all four corners match, I, I don't even know if that was necessarily pitched to these two. I, I don't think they were going to play by any rules like that. They're here to just batter each other. And a big boot right there by Manders. Manders up on the second row. Wait a minute. But oh! Oh, God, look at that! Charles Mason just yanked Manders into a rolling DVD. That's it. No! Oh, my God, I thought he had him. That rapid-fire Death Valley driver that Charles Mason is known for. And with the momentum coming off the Watch top, as we this. see it here. He pulls him off the middle right there. Rapid-fire Death Valley Bob hooks the far leg. Manders with the lariat! As we're back to live action. That is game! No. What? How did Charles Mason kick out of that lariat? It looked to me like Manders got all of it, but watch this. He had him by his mouth here, turns him around, duck under, and a big lariat right there by the big man. And now Manders looking to finally finish off Charles Mason. Looks like he's going to go for that power swing. Oh, he's going to do an Oklahoma stampede. No. Yeah, Mason out the back. Oh, oh, it goes low. A low blow. Again, that's legal here. That's the thing. This is uncensored, and this is a bull rope match. And now, oh, God. Oh, no. Now he's wrapping the bull rope around the neck of Manders, and now he's going to pull away. And Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no. And he's got to stop it. He's got no choice. The winner of the match, Charles Mason. And unfortunately for one call, the one called Mantis, he could not gain a measure of revenge here against Charles Mason. It is the root of all evil, getting the victory. As, look at this. He's choking the life out of him. Roughly didn't want to take any chances. Uh, it looked like managers were starting to change colors. And for the safety of uh, the wrestlers involved, the referee calls for the bell. And once again, Charles Mason On somehow standing tall. Another individual who had just terrorized JTW for so long. And it just seems like he can not be kept down. And I think that part of that is because he knows how much chaos he brings and he thrives on that. Oh, look at this. He's getting in the face of some of our young fans here. He walks away now. And everyone here in the Boots and Elf Club showing their appreciation for one called Manders. Manders doing what he could, but unfortunately got caught there. Got the bull rope wrapped around his own neck, and unfortunately losing in his own uh, you know, specialty match here. Uh, another unfortunate embarrassment for one called Manders. Put everything into this that he could, but did not get the uh, victory here. Our next contest is an extreme rules match set for one ball. And it is for the Game Changer Wrestling Extreme Championship. Now, Veda, you've followed this young man's career for a very long time. I'm, 
I would guess since the beginning of his career. Do you know of Alec Price ever being in this type of a match before? Uh, an extreme death match. Alec Price is, as you know, as intense as they come. I would say that's even an extreme level of intensity. He's absolutely fearless. But a match like this, where weapons are not just allowed, they are encouraged. I don't know that he has ever been in a situation quite like this. And not in a situation with someone who is just as intense as he is. He is the challenger, the Pride City OG Outlet. Here comes running. Oh! oh! 
but he gets caught in the face by Alan Price. Look at this. Oh! oh On to the apron. Big back suplex. Here we go. And he just got tossed into some chairs. And watch out, Bix. Here we go. He's tossing into oh. the side of the wall there. There's a metal panel right there. Uh oh, oh, a body slam on See, the floor. See, that's how you do a, a uh, traditional body slam. Beast man, take note. This one was on the hardwood floor, though. And now Alec Price, big for him to the side of the head, side of the noggin of one Cole Radrick. And look at this. Cole Radrick taking a seat. Alec Price setting up for something here. There we go. Oh, no. Caught with a roundhouse kick by Cole Radrick. And now Cole looking for something underneath the ring. Oh, we got a ladder. Oh boy, we, we got, got a ladder. Uh oh. Some more chairs, it looks like. Wow, I, I, you know, I'm assuming that the, uh, our uh, JCW staff went to uh, Home Depot. They went to uh, Kmart to get a lot of these items here well, for tonight's event. Have you ever tried cupping? Yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah, yeah. It pulls on the muscles. It's actually free heat. So that, and it's usually a little expensive, so that's free therapy for right Cole Radrick. Oh! Wow. Water bottle on a stick. That it is. Wait a minute, now he oh! bounces it right off his head. Goes Lover, to we need a new champ. No. Unbelievable. He's just stopping away now. Um, Cole Radley is Alec Price. And now with a trash can lit to the head. And another one shot. Oh! And he's beating himself over the head with it. Okay. These guys are really, really fired up. And now Alec Price is picking him up. He may look, maybe powerbomb him. Oh no, he's gonna come. Oh, that him. got powerbomb. But Radrick knew what was coming, throwing some jabs. Look at that. Oh, Radrick. Right hand to the head. That picks him up in a fireman's carry position. Whoa. Wait a minute. Price getting out. And now maybe going for that back. Oh, oh, the, the trash can. I'll tell you what. Hooks the leg. No. Oh, very close. Alec Price. Just surprised there. Thought he had the win. Thought he had the, the, the championship right in his grasp. Prices. Okay, Ooh. so he's setting up the ladder on top of the ropes there. Which is a little, it's a little wobbly. It could certainly be a bit wobbly. Watch this. Dodge power bomb onto this trash can. Oh, rest in peace, Oscar. Oh my goodness. And now tossing. Whoa! Oh, wow. And it's slingshot split leg drop. Why not? Sure. Alec Price going all in. We we had speculated that we weren't sure if, if Price had been in hardcore environments like this before. And I think that he had just really just he's going all in with this opportunity. Oh, it's a stick up. Nope. Oh, he gets caught with a cold run. And another one by Cole Radrick. Cole Radrick all fired up. Swings through. Uh-oh, Price up on the shoulders. DVD into the door. Which didn't break, by It way. didn't break, and Nick, we say it all the time. That's all the time's even worse. No, because something's going to break. It's either going to be the door or your body. Radrick, though, he is determined. Oh, no, it broke. This time he got it. Second time with the guitar. Add 
this to his collection. Alec Rice, who has been very, very successful collecting championships across the country, especially here in the Northeast. And now, going for something here. Oh, this could be, wait a minute. Whoa. Big roundhouse there by Alec Price. Here we go. Oh, this could be nasty. And I think it will be. It's a stick up into the ladder. Oh God, he landed face first on the ladder. And no. Cole somehow getting his right shoulder up. And Alex Price, he set up that ladder. Watch this. Watch the impact of Cole's face on the ladder. Alex Price set that ladder up like five minutes ago. He had a plan. He knew. He thought that this was going to be it. Now he has that. And like. That's a dramatic. Fanny pack he always wears. Oh, wait a minute. What? Oh, my God. Besides the bottle cap, we have thumbtacks. Oh, this is going to be nasty. Oh, this is going to be brutal. Oh, Roger, though, fighting out. Wait a minute, Cole Roger. Oh, wait. Quick switch by Alec Price. Alec Price. All the way up and all the way down. Look at this. This has to be one of the most chaotic events we've ever seen here in JCW. This is already my show of the year. <laughs> Absolutely. We're having a blast. We hope you folks who are joining us live on YouTube as well as our live audience oh, no, no, no. are enjoying this. Ow! Double stop! To the back of the head. Yeah, over and the chair. Cole Roderick was simply guillotined on that chair. Jersey Championship Wrestling. I'll tell you what, we bringing to you folks, to the fans, what you want to see, the kind of hot action. You're only going to get this here, JCW. Yeah, Cole just set sights on that pile of thumbtacks. That's now. Wait a minute. Fighting, fighting everything with everything that he has. Oh, uh -oh. Roderick managed to miss. Oh. And a double stomp into the thumbtack. Alec Price. Oh, wow. And Paul Roderick double stomp into the thumbtack. And now he's rolling in them as he tries to recover. Watch this. Roderick thought he had avoided things. That big double foot stop right there by Alec Price. Where are all of these chairs coming from? I, again, I think they went to Home Depot and to Kmart and they were special, I think. End of summer sale, from what I understand. Oh, oh God, that he just tossed it. a little gratuitous, Alec. He just kind of tossed it ever so uh, gingerly. All right, we've got head. four chairs set up here. And Cole Roderick. In big trouble. He's gonna lose the championship tonight. He very well could. Alec wants to end this. Wait a minute. Oh, oh. Hey. Radrick turned it into a into a stunner. Uh oh. Uh oh. Could this be it? Yep. If he hits it, it's done. Oh, oh God. Onto the pile of chairs. If he can get the cover here, he can do it. That's it. The winner of the match, and still, Dean Chicken Wrestling, Extreme Chicken, Ready Daddy, Oh, Red Red. Watch this. You see a replay here, just drops him, sits out on all four chairs, Blasts him, hooks the leg, and it is over. Cole Radrick retains the GCW Extreme Championship under extreme rules. And I'm almost out of breath here. Beta. We're four matches in, 
and so much great action still to come. We're only halfway into this event. And look at the action we've been seeing. Frederick yeah, offers the hand. So respect here. Incredible. Oh my goodness. I think the adrenaline's still pumping. I think that's why Alec doesn't feel it as much, but no, he will. Maybe later on when he he's laying in bed or tomorrow morning when he tries to get up. And now we have seen Cole Radrick in death matches. You know, that's kind of kind of his thing. Alec Price, he seemed to be, regardless of the outcome of the match, he seemed to be having a, a grand old time in there. I have to wonder if maybe we're gonna see a little bit more of uh, the hardcore action out of the Prize City OG. And it, once again, our cleanup are sponsored by GCWmerch.com. We should get some GCW branded dust pans, maybe some like wipes of some sort. I don't know. I'm just yeah. saying that there's some opportunities here and we are missing out on that. I'm just saying there, there are some great opportunities for, uh, you know, hand sanitizers. Ooh. There you go. So we you. are cleaning up all the sharps and pointies on to our next match. Yeah, so we want to make sure that, uh, you know, not every uh, match on this show is necessarily a death match. We have a lot of great stipulations. Uh, we have a uh, karate match, martial arts match. Uh, we have a uh, lucha extrema. Okay, I spoke too soon about the screen rules. Um, and we're also going to see, coming up shortly, Veda, a last woman standing match. Yeah, I am uh, excited about this one. Two of the recent standouts in JCW. And we are going to see that coming up shortly as we toss it back. To Our Florida. next contest is a last woman standing match. This is going to be something else. We have uh, two young ladies here who are looking to make a name for themselves, uh, whatever it takes to make their mark in this industry. And this young lady, this woman right here, the heart of a lioness. The ferociousness of a tigress. She is the kick demon. Janai Kai. Janai Kai. Janai has been so impressive in JCW in both singles and tag competition tonight. She's going it alone. And she is taking on a woman who's got quite the size advantage, has the power advantage. This is one tough, tough woman here. And our opponent, the patriarch of mayhem, Sawyer Red. something here. Uh, Soria Rec, as you mentioned, she has a win over one show in Janela. Uh, very impressive. Had that outing, as you said, against Yamashita. And Janai Kai, who has had her battles with one Masha Slamovich, who we're going to see later on this evening. Uh, she's taken... Oh, oh, wow. There you go. The height and the power of Sawyer Rec already on full display. I mean, 
you figure she's a very tall person. So imagine she picks you up for a back off suplex. You're practically getting a nosebleed before you get dropped. And now, just the resiliency of Janai Kai getting back in the ring now. Trying to catch her with those kicks to the, to the thighs. Roundhouse kicks to the lower extremities. Now spin wheel kick to the midsection. Coming off the ropes. Whoa, Sawyer got out of the way. Uh-oh. Yeah, if she chokes on you, that, that could be the end of it. Big headbutt. Yeah, I think Sawyer also has that long reach. Like oh. She can use that to keep Janai away. Oh. Yeah, she's got those oh. long limbs and she just catches her right there with that clothesline. And Janai Kai is down, which means the official is gonna start a count here. Janai has until 10 to get back up on her feet. And now, Jeffrey starts to count, but Janai Kai, we've seen her even compete in blood sport. This is a, a very tough young lady. This, this is a, a fighter here. And she just does whatever it takes. I mean, this is quite a clash in styles. You have the more, uh, I guess you could say, polished martial arts background of Janai Kai against the brute force. The brawn of one Sawyer Wreck. I mean, Janai Kai has been involved in martial arts since the age of seven. And so that's a long time since she was a child. This is all she knows. Oh, just flattening the jaw of Sawyer Wreck. But Sawyer, not quite down yet. And now Janai just stopping on the back. She's got to do whatever it takes. Look at this now. Oh, oh. Good. oh my God. She could easily pop that shoulder out of place and that would be the end of it. Look at this working. She hammer locks. She's got her in the hammer lock. And look at this. Right into a dragon sleeper. Very oh, nice. Oh, but look at Janai Kai reaching her own arm behind her own back for extra leverage. And Sawyer trying to get those knees underneath her to alleviate some of this. But now she's going down. Yeah, she's trying to pull the uh, form that was right under her chin. But now Sawyer's down. Now, okay, wait a minute. And if Janai stands back up, the official's gonna have to start a count here again. Two, up to three. Can Sawyer wreck? Make it to her feet here. Makes you wonder if this wasn't a last woman standing stipulation. Could Janai have possibly won by referee uh, stoppage submission? And now, who is Janai pulling in some chairs? I think we're really seeing like the devilish side of a, a lot of our competitors here in JCW. Well, these are unique stipulations. Oh, for many people involved. Oh God, she just put up her hand and that was it. Oh God, that would scare me. <laughs> and just wallop Janai, who again, for as tough as Janai Kai is, she is generally not in matches that involve things like steel chairs, whereas this is what Sawyer Wreck does. Oh God, oh. just tossed the chair in the head. And now we're seeing a replay here. And she just wallops her with that chair. As we get back to the live action, it is Janai now who nails Sawyer Wreck. It's Sawyer on the ring apron. It's Janai trying, trying desperately to get to her feet. And now they're both on their knees here. And not just going at it. Look at this, she grabbed her by the wrist. And now they just nail, they're attached to each other, essentially. These forearms, back to back. Look at this. Form to the chest and a form to the jaw here by Sawyer Wreck. And oh God, she just caught her right in the jaw. Here we go, big kick right to the near the throat area there. And a big form to the side of the head of Janai Kai. A brutal battle of strikes, but again, until someone goes down, the official is not going to start a count and this match will not end. Essentially, if you can't continue, that's when the match ends. Uh oh. Oh boy. Janai ran oh, right into that. A huge choke oh, slam. Man alive. And Sawyer. 
Warrior. Oh, this is a scary Warrior making thing the time. Look at this. Oh, oh. a wow. They got caught. I think Sawyer Rex thought that Janai was down and out, wanted to add a little exclamation point onto things. And instead, this might be what Janai oh. needs to end the match. Big knee strike and some kicks Round to the kick. chest. Sawyer oh swiped it away. Big choke slam. Oh, God. Oh, they're both down. I'll tell you what, I mean, it's it's amazing. Janai hits her with a flurry of kicks, as we're seeing here. She just picks her up and just chokes her. Again, you see Janai with a series of kicks to Sawyer Reckon. And all it takes is Sawyer, who's so powerful, using her strength. Just grabs her by the throat, picks her up, and chokes her. You see multiple choke slams here by Sawyer Wreck. And now they're just going at it with the form. I, I, I don't know what to say. I've got to give uh, Janai credit for being courageous. This is a, a powerful woman and not getting nailed with chair, a chair to the back to try to go blow for blow here with Sawyer Wreck instead of trying to keep some distance between them. Oh no. And she's picked her up for another choke slam. Oh, she just under the her chair! Down. My God, she just tossed her up to two chairs. We're up to three. Watch this. Right Watch here. Janai Kai's head on the back of that metal chair. And now, Janai is just dazed. She's got to be seeing stars. Are we up to nine? Oh, that's it. That is it. That is the end of the match. The winner of the match, Sawyer Wreck. Sawyer Wreck with that huge choke slam onto a pile of steel chairs defeats Janai Kai. And had Janai been able to connect with, watch this, big choke slam. That was it, Nick. If Janai had been able to connect with that tornado kick, I think this match would have definitely gone a different way. Almost certainly. I think uh, had uh, maybe the game plan of Janai Kai been a little different, and she kept a little bit more di distance, trying to catch her with a few more kicks. And like you said, that spe specifically that tornado kick, which was the uh, fatal error that she made. Maybe this would have gone a different way. But Sawyer Wreck continuing with her winning ways here in Jason W. And we are just moving along. We've got some great action here. I'll tell you what, I. Our next fight at JCW London Censored is a martial arts match where the ring will be surrounded by ninjas attempting to murder the participants. So if you're wondering, as I was, what a martial arts match means, ball. apparently it is that. Oh, the ninjas are in position. I don't know what to say about this. This is um, one of the most unique events I've ever been a part of. Here comes Yoya, showing respect to this line of ninjas. Oh my goodness. Um, Who was uh, MLJ? Now I don't know if this is just MLJ's editorial discretion. He is the Cambodian Dragon. Yoya! MLJ claims that these ninjas will be around the ring to attempt to K-word the participants. shoot murder but honestly who knows and i especially hope for personal reasons that all will be well after this match so essentially 
let me see if I got this straight. And if you notice, ML referred to this as a, our next fight, which is appropriate enough. Uh, the, the ninjas are going to attempt to MDK the uh, the uh, opponents, the two. Uh, yeah, so I, I think apparently they're going to be around the ring. As people, Mike Bailey makes his way to the ring. And he did not acknowledge the ninjas, but they bowed to him. Okay. All right, that's that's kind of a good sign, right? I uh, think so. <laughs> We'd like to think so. We essentially do not want to see anyone getting an empty cage. Uh, we would like to see a winner and a loser. Uh, and now the a fair ninjas, contest. they're moving into position here. And introducing his opponent, this is Speedball! And what a year Speedball Mike Bailey has been having. Uh, you could say he's been having a career year in 2022. I mean, has been across the globe, uh, having great match after great match, banger after banger, as they say. Recently taking on someone who's having a heck of a year himself in Will Ospreay in the UK. And, yeah, uh, Mike Bailey came very close to adding out to another. The yeah, another <laughs> title. Not successful that night, but he is still the Impact Wrestling Exhibition Champion. That title not on the line here tonight. It's hard to explain ninjas to Impact, so that wasn't clear. But what we do have is a martial arts match. We know, of course, Mike Bailey, a fourth degree Taekwondo back, black belt. We know about his martial arts background. Yo-Yo, though, also extensively trained and disciplined. As a bow, okay. Here we go. Handshake. Here we go. Okay, there we go. There you go. Okay, as they circle each other. Here we go. Also, shout out to Cobra Kai. A new season just dropped, I believe it was yesterday. I haven't had the chance to watch it yet, but. Uh, Looking forward to it. I can assure you that neither has my husband, so Mike Bailey did not learn anything from the new season of Cobra Kai yet. Yo Yo with the sweep. Oh! Oh! Both assuming the crane position. The crane position. And they both put their feet down at the same time. Okay, that is deadly. We may, it may not even get to the ninjas if they strike with that crane kick. And our fans here at ringside really getting into this. I thought karaoke night was earlier. I could have sworn. Yeah, I thought that was part of the settlement series. As far as I know, I was there. I don't. But now, it's Bailey and Yo-Yo now. I'm not too sure where to go with this. Again, uh, I think the ninjas disappeared. Well, they are ninjas. Yeah, that's true. They went up in smoke, potentially. Um, Bailey now on the offense, but Yo-Yo with the speed. There you go. Uh -huh. Whoa, a low drop kick kicks people down. Here we go. Oh, Remember no. that crane kick again got caught? Big back go. suplex. Here we go, rolls through here. Look out for Yoya. Uh -oh. Going for that backside. Yoya again, and just so him. quick. Okay, and there are pinfalls. In this martial arts match, we are learning the rules as we go. They're the ninjas. They're lurking at ringside. Okay, so. And, all right. Oh, Yo-Yo! Yo-Yo in the pool of ninjas! Oh, no. Oh, he made eye contact with one and it attacked! Okay. And meanwhile, Speedball, Wrecking Ball style oh, no. dropkick, and now Speedball is taking on the ninjas! Oh, my God. Where are my quarters? I feel like I'm watching Double Dragon. Speedball back in the ring. Man, did I just show my age on that one? I think they, they, they're staying on the outside. 
Okay, so essentially, instead of lumber jacks, we have ninjas. Correct. Okay. And big double knees by Speedball into a pin. But apparently only on one side of the ring. Okay. Well, they're, they're, they're gathered there, a sort of a swarm. Hard camp ninjas. ninjas? Hard camp ninjas. Hard camp ninjas. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, look at that. Knife edge chop, right? And Yoya trying to get away. Oh, strike to the midsection right there. As again, the ninjas fly in wait. They lurk. Here we go. Oh, 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 no. oh, oh, no. oh, oh, no. oh, 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 punch. Oh, no. But it fired Yoya. Oh. oh. Oh man, that was just the North Star style. No. And Speedball can't believe it. He did the one inch punch. I he, thought. That should have been it. Watch this. He sets it up. One inch punch. That was it. That should have been it. You figured he passes out, he potentially dies, he gets thrown to the lurking ninjas and then dies. Oh, wait a minute. People oh, hold on. Oh, Yoya just ball. ate the boot. Oh, but Yoya caught it. Oh. People back in the ninjas. Among the ninjas. People fighting off the ninjas. Here we go. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Look at this. Oh, and the distraction. The time spent outside gave Yoya enough time to recover. Catches him with that drop kick, just knocks him out of the air. They're like vultures, these ninjas. Vulturesque ninjas. Here we go. Look like a straw break. A series of kicks here by Yoya. Wait a minute. Oh, big snap dragon, and Yoya is on fire into a cutter. This is it. And no. Not enough, and Yoya! Oh, going Yoya. for the ankle lock! Going for the ankle lock. Look at the way he's applying pressure to the ankle, to the foot. But Speedball fighting his way out of this. Yoya still holding on to the ankle. Finally, Speedball able to free himself. Oh my god, look at that rolling soul butt oh. and an axe kick. Right, and then a roundhouse to the chest. And Speedball now. Hearts coming! No, not enough. And watch this. Snap dragon right there. Pops back up, right catches him with the cutter. cutter. Unbelievable. What great action. Speedball really feeling it here. Buttsaw kick. Oh, Yoya caught it. Oh, oh no. Uh -oh. Okay, they both like, oh, there you go. Ah. Trading leg kicks. Back and forth. Oh God, now they're gonna get Charlie Horse. It's gonna be bad. Blocking. Oh, 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 oh. The speedball kicks. Followed up with that Enziguri, but Yoya. Kick to the knee, roundhouse to the face right there. Oh, wait a minute. Speedball went under the kick, following it up. Back of the head, they are both down. Now, here's what I'm concerned about. Now, if, let's say, now this isn't the last man standing, but if they can't recover when, with the referee's count, oh, here we go. Speedball with a series of kicks. And then Yo, you're coming right back. Kick to the knee. Roundhouse to the face. Tries to catch him right there and gets caught with that insecurity and then drop kick to the back of the head. Again, now my question, if neither one can answer the referee's count, does that mean that the ninjas then come into the ring? They swarm them and then it's MTK yeah, there? I, I don't know. I, I don't know if there was like a like a meeting beforehand to yeah. explain. I don't know. I just with that whole like MTK stipulation. I, I would, like I would hope. To... Yeah, sort of like 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 chum being thrown to the sharks. Did they just swarm? Yeah, I, I don't know. That's the scary part. And now, 
Mike Bailey with a four on a back and forth exchange here by Yogan Bailey. Oh, big kick to the chest there. Uh oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 wait a minute. He's got to watch out for these ninjas. Oh, no. Yoya in the ninjas, people. Drive a moonsault onto the pile of ninjas. And they went down like bowling pins. Bailey now trying to toss Yoya back into the ring. I think it's best if they try to keep it in the ring. I think that's just uh, my advice. Oh, oh. Yoya. Yoya is caught up on the ropes. And now, Mike Bailey. Speedball to the top turnbuckle. Springboard here. Oh, a double stop. Launching Yoya back into the ring. This has to be it. And no. Somehow, Yoya gets that left shoulder up at the last possible second. Unbelievable action we are seeing here. And here's a replay of it. Springboard, double foot stomp to the back of Yoya, but not enough for the three. And here comes Mike Bailey. And oh my God! All those and now heading up top. Oh, Yoya out of the way. Ultimate weapon did not connect. Oh, oh. Here we go. Yoya trying to catch. Bailey here, and this is a, 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 oh. in a dangerous position. And look, the, the ninjas, they are poised. They are ready to strike. Uh -oh. Oh. This is very bad for one so of them. So if Yo-Yo falls backwards, he's going to hit the ground. But if Bailey falls backwards, he's going to land in this pile of ninjas again. And they have been ordered to end the life. Oh, no! Oh, no! Wait a minute. Well, he flattened some of the ninjas, so that might lessen their effectiveness. They're, they're trying to, I think they're trying to make sure that they're all okay. But here comes Yoya. Here oh, comes Yoya. Oh, Perched oh. on the top turnbuckle. And look at oh. this. The pick on Elo right off the top. And he there takes are out. Ninjas everywhere. Now Yoya with a casadora. Rolling through. And no, oh wait, look at this. Going for that leg bar, look like. Back no, to back. the ankle, back to the ankle. Right back to that ankle lock. And if he could put enough pressure, he could get a submission. If he keeps him in the middle, but he's gotta keep him in the middle. Bailey is reaching. And he's trying. Bailey just able to free himself here. And now, lands on the apron. Roundhouse kick to the back of the head of Yoya. And wait a minute. Oh no, they're both oh, back Oh, Yoya! The gunner off the top! This has to be it! Ugh. Oh wow. And uniquely executed. Uh, uh, basically, a Hamadachan cutter. And then he went for a cradle out of it. And Bailey just somehow getting to his feet. Oh, Yoya is in a bad place right now. Bailey locking oh. on the Flamingo driver. Nick, we have seen this before. And this could be it. This could spend, spell the end. Oh, but Yoya from behind Sunset Flip. Uh -oh. oh, wow. Here we go. Oh, the double knees. Here we go with the big roundhouse. No. And Yo-Yo with the reverse waist lock. Maybe setting up for something here, but Bailey, no, gets blocked with that kick. Now he elbows him in the knee, kicks the knee, kicks the knee out. Oh! Oh, 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 no! Oh, the ninjas felt that on the floor. Oh, here we go, here we go. And there, oh, he hits it. Flamingo driver, three. And Mike Bailey. Mike Bailey has won the martial arts match in the ninjas. Oh, the ninjas are on the move, Nick. Oh, no. Oh, no. What is going to happen here? The ninjas have surrounded the entirety of the ring. But this is what I'm concerned about. Yoya has lost the match. Does, does he get, like, yeah, devoured or something? Yeah, he's defenseless right now. 
Does he get like devoured by the ninjas? I, that, that's the big question. Watch this. Kick through the face oh. of Yoya following up with this flamingo driver and Bailey. Sets up that flamingo driver out of the corner and just drops him. Cradles him and got the win. Respect yeah. shown here. Even in losing, Yoya showing respect. And uh oh. Oh, uh -oh. wait a minute, wait a minute, the wait a minute. The ninjas are in the ring. Okay, okay. What do we do here? What's gonna happen? Oh, oh wait a minute, powder. It's powder to the face. Wait a minute, what is going on here? Why? Wait a minute. And now Yo-Yo, Yo-Yo Yo Yo is doing what he can to, to fight these ninjas off what is going on, on his own. He's, he's trying to take them out as best he can. Wait. Oh wait, he's chopping him in the neck. There you go. But there's one ninja that's left. That's the ninja, that's the ninja who threw the powder, Nick. Yeah, what is going on? Oh, oh no. in the face of Yo-Yo. Oh no. What is going on here? What is this? What's going on? Oh, come on! Oh, you've got to be kidding me. He can't get over losing the Bunkhouse Battle Royal to Yoya. You've got to be kidding me, Charles Mason. Out for revenge on Yoya, who oh. just had an absolutely brutal fight with Mike Bailey. This man just knows, his, his evil knows no bounds. And Andre. again, there was a handful of powder to the face of Yoya. Didn't even see what was coming. Charles Mason, I once again, just raining chaos over all of JCW. I don't get this. I just don't I get mean, this. I will point out here, Nick, that we are a two-person broadcast crew now. We used to be three. We had Billy Dixon alongside of us for a long time. And Charles Mason took care of Billy. Yeah. And I'm still, still pretty hot about that. Oh, yeah. Pretty disgusted by uh, the action. It just seems like no one is safe as long as Mason is creeping around. This is terrible. But I'll tell you what, I don't think it's going to stay like this. Again, our next event, October 9th, at the showboat, the carousel room. JCW returns Sunday, October 9th. Tickets already on sale. A great weekend of action along with JCW. We always enjoy our big weekends in Atlantic City. And uh, the month of October is going to be no different. Information will be available very, very shortly. We are not done yet. Oh no, we still have two big matches still to come here. And our next matchup should be quite interesting. Not been able to uh, our catch our breath. Is a tag team match under Lucha Extrema rules. Now, one team here are former GCW tag team champions. On not one but two occasions. Yes. The other team. We have not seen together in quite some time. They have been on uh, parallel paths, parallel single paths. But when the opportunity arrives, when JCW officials said, hey guys, we've got the former GCW Tag Team Champions coming in. How about you guys do it one more time? This time under Lucha 
Extrema rules. They said, let's do it. Dogs in this, they've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And these two men, I uh, had the pleasure of working with as they were special guest uh, Spanish announcers for our settlement series. So I had the pleasure of working with them briefly, and now I get to see them in action here. As they are invading JCW. And introducing their opponents, fighting out of Pachuca, Hidalgo, Mexico. With an official combined weight of 775 kilograms, the team of Cayo de Cayo, Piro Extremo, y su cabeza, Cinco Pay. Extremo, who refers to him as the rooster that rules the roost. And his majesty of death, Cyclope. This is quite an opportunity for Mathers and McKay. If they can get the Duke here, it's going to be a, this could skyrocket their careers. And as you said, Nick, although Mathers and McKay have extensive experience tagging together as Wasted Youth, it's, it's been a minute since we saw them work together in JCW. Whereas their opponents, this is what they do. Yep. They, uh, I mean, these are guys that have uh, practically shared the same dinner plate. I mean, they have uh, at eight, they slept. Uh, they've lived together. I mean, they've been on the road together. These, these two guys are like brothers. Sequel uh, Bay and Mierda Cinema. They have bled together. They have fought together. They fought against each other. Okay, with the elbow. Sequel Bay, there we go. <laughs> wow. The action is hot and heavy and it's wild. Okay. Handshake there and a tag and another tag. Double switch. And it's Ciclo, it, it's uh, Mieva Extremo here now with Marcus Matty. As they get set to tie up here. And again, it's Mathers and McKay using that quickness. Quick cover. Knife, no. Oh, Mathers rolls through. Slips through. Wait, Extremo no. with control. Mathers finally able to get out. Off the ropes. Oh. Look at this. Flying head scissors right there by Mathers. But look down the other Extremo with a big forearm to the face. And Mathers is answering back right there. But Miedo Extremo with a forearm of his own drops him to his knee. One knee. And they're going back and forth. You can hear it. That is bone on bone. And Marcus Mathers is as tough as they come, trained by the bulldozer, Matt Tremont. He has been in some wars himself. <laughs> oh. He said, come on, perro. He called him a dog, a lowly dog. Oof. Oh no, 
Oh, I'll fix the knee out. And step him into gear right there by the other channel. Big kick to the chest, to the midsection, and a chop. Right in the corner here. And now, the knife edge chopped there by Mathers. And another one. Makes oh, the tag here to yep, McKay. McKay legal. Here we go. Mathers and McKay. Toss the, the other extended one to the corner. Big boot right there by Mathers. Here comes McKay with a big knee. And now Mathers with some momentum. Big forearm. Snap there, rolls through. Nice kick to the side of the head. Look at this. Oh, McKay with the cover. Running shooting star press there. Not enough though. Now it is McKay in control. It is wasted use of control here. Nice suplex. Beautifully executed. And now, another cover. Lateral press didn't hook the leg. And look at, look at the other extremely trying to press here with the bridging on the top of his head here. Quick tags by wasted use. And I am just, I am impressed by the cohesiveness and the focus of Mathers and McKay. They're going for every pinfall that they can. They're getting the quick tags in. You can tell how seriously they are taking this match. Absolutely. I think the minute this was announced, they realized they had to, uh... oh, oh, look at uh -oh. this with a couple of shoot shots. And a big neck breaker. And now this is, this, this is the experience right here kicking in uh, of Los Masus. And now victim kick to the shoulder blades and now one to the chest. Uh-oh. I worry when Ciclope says, okay, Lucha Extrema. With him, that usually means like light tubes and all sorts of things, and we've already seen enough. Yeah, let's see. Action. Well, let's see what's still left underneath the ring. That's true. At this point. There's been a lot used so far, so who knows? More and more chairs. Okay. Again, Over this here. is the stipulation of this particular match. So Mathers and McKay knew what they were getting into when they signed up for this. And oh. now just Marcus Mathers. With a quick pin to the head and now middle forward shirt to the midsection. Back to the top of the head, right to the temple. Okay, he got knocked off the apron. Is he still, he might still be down. Yeah, it looks like he might be. And Mather's able to kick out. And oh, wow, now they got a ladder. ladder. That does not bode well for Mather's here. Ladder has really been a, a featured guest star tonight here at JCW Uncensored. Oh, and now it looks like we got another wooden board here. Oh, that actually. I mean, you know, sitting on a sequel page just drops that ladder on the midsection of Mathers. This is not, this is not boding well for Wasted Youth, that's for sure. And now, the other cinema setting, oh God, he's setting up one of these wooden doors across these chairs, and now they're setting up more chairs on yeah, top we of saw them. We saw some of these contraptions put together, but they were in the ring before. Now this has a second layer oh, to it. Oh, God. And the one of the chairs is sideways. That just sounds insane. That, looks, that just looks painful. And now there's he's in big trouble here. He is alone in the ring. And now, now there's off uh -oh. the Buster, oh, holding on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, he oh. Oh, got caught with the chair to the side of the head. Yikes. Shades of Mexico's most wanted. Shout out to Halloween and Damien 666. Oh. And a chair right to the head here. And Dylan McKay now trying to finally come to his partner's aid, but perhaps too little too late. And now he's just, oh, God. Look at that, he he wore that metal folding chair like a necktie. And now, 
It is most Masusos in complete control. Now, replay here, a chair to the back, and then right oh, there, the necktie. Mathers oh, is my God. gushing. Oh, God. He is gushing blood now. This this is what they're known for. This is what, now you've come into the world of Los Masusos. Blue Jack Cinema, that's what they're about. Again, these two young men who were influenced by that generation over 20 years ago of X-Law, when you saw the likes of Crazy Boy, Sabu, who, who invaded Mexico at that time. And now, oh my goodness. Setting him up for something here, but it looked like Mathers was trying to fight that back. Doing what he can. Mathers out from behind on his feet. No, trying to reaching, the tag. reaching for that tag. No, oh, oh God, gets tossed. That roundhouse kick right there by Mathers. Gonna make the tag, and yes, finally tags in McKay. Who's, who himself is bleeding? Wow. As he catches him with the missile drop kick to Miller Extremo. Big form right there by McKay. Nice kick, roundhouse to the head, and a good old chair to the head. And let's keep in mind, uh, it's not exactly, uh, McKay's not exactly his forte with the uh, blue check. Stadamo is kind of an extreme worse. No, I, you know, Mathers has a little more experience in these hardcore battles, but McKay with blood running down his face. A little bit more stylistic, and so kind of out of his element, but nonetheless, trying to make the most of this opportunity. Goes for a lion salt, lands on his knee. That could potentially blow out a knee like that. Yeah, the official is checking to make sure that Dylan McKay can even continue. And now near the extremo with blood flowing from his skull. Trying to catch some breath, catch his breath here. And he's up to his feet. Reaches for the ladder here. And now, oh my goodness, there's my sisters with the ladder and waiting for McKay to get up. They're ready to nail him with it. Oh, they just tossed it at McKay. I know that Mathers and McKay, they knew what they were getting into with this match. Watch this, the ladder just hurled into the face of Dylan McKay. They knew what they were getting into with this match, but they also said it was the biggest match of their careers. They know how important it is, their biggest match as a team. And I, I still don't know if they quite understood the level of violence that they had the potential to be involved in tonight. I really don't think they uh, did here. I mean, again, you have two masters of uh, mayhem here. In Ciclope and Miedo Extremo. And now, wait a minute. Ciclope climbing that ladder. Wait a minute. McKay. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh. no, 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 no. This is going to be bad. Oh, God. McKay in that curb stomp position. Oh. oh, wow. Just landed with all his weight to the back of the head and back of the neck of McKay, goes for the cover. And Mathers, at the last possible second, breaking it up. And Marcus Mathers, Look with the this. blood on his face, watch this! Puts all his weight, lands with all his weight to the back of the head of McKay. In that curb stomp position, as he came off the ladder. And now, Mathers trying to get this crowd behind McKay. And now, wait a minute, he scales the ladder. Oh! Look at this. McKay has finally created an opening for himself. He is crawling towards his partner, Marcus. Mathers gets the tag. Mathers, it's legal. Well, big crossbody on Ciclope. Here comes the other extremo. He ducks under. Big form. Big knee to the head. Goes for a schoolboy. And then catches him with a cutter. And now setting up the ladder. Mathers, big kick to the head of the other extremo. Gets him on his shoulders in a fireman's carry position. And 
what's he going for here? It looked like he was going for one set of turnbuckles out. He just tossed him right onto that ladder, just bent it in two. <laughs> Leaving that ladder in a V-shape. And now he's got a metal folding chair in his hand. And he just tosses it right at the head oh. of Super Bay. Oh my God. Chairs are everywhere. Here Marcus Mathers Mathers. is everywhere. Oh man. I'll tell you what, this is a 3D experience for our fans at ringside. Just chaos. And now Mathers going after Sequel Pig, tossing him back in the ring as he climbs the top rope. And he looks for something here. Oh, oh he cuts. The, yeah, the swanton. Goes for the cover. Not enough. What is it going to take here? for one of these two teams to be victorious. And look at this oh. now. Mather setting up. Please did you Super with the home. double team. Look at this back crack. Oh. No! Moonsault. He catches him with mainly the knees across the midsection. Puts the leg in. Yeah, no, it's oh. with a chair. And then one for Mathers. This is sheer brutality. With nearly no end in sight. Blood everywhere, chairs everywhere. Uh -oh. McKay Wait a minute. Oh. got stopped. So did Mathers. Uh oh, here comes Mather Extremo. As he looks to, for something here. Look at this. Oh! Oh, God. And Dylan McKay caught the edge of that chair. With his calf, that could be a shattered leg destroyer. Oh man, this could be it. He goes for the cover. Marcus Mathers oh, breaks oh up the pin God. with a destroyer. Onto the back of Sequel Pace. Now imagine that's double the weight his partner and his opponent. Yeah, right but also back. keep in mind that Dylan McKay was at the bottom of all of that. Yikes. Everyone is down. It's Mathers. Calling to check on his partner. And now, all four men are down. Who's going to get to their feet first? Well, Sequel Pace sitting. Mathers on his knees. Wait a minute. Okay, now they're all getting up. Uh, here we go. The standoff here. Back and forth with the forearms. Macisos, wasted youth. And this may be the final stand for one of these two teams. Oh! Oof. McKay rocked, but Mathers still on his feet. And it's Mathers and Cyclope. Nice head chops back and forth. Pay with the kick to the gut. First oh. on the Irish whip. Here comes Mathers, gets caught with a boot here. Oh! Uh oh. So, oh! Looks like he's trying to choke him out here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What is McKay going for? You see McKay scaling the ropes here. And he is climbing. It looks like Mathers is almost out, but Dylan McKay! Oh, wow. Shooting star with the double knees right to the back of the other. Sequel pain. Here comes Miedo Extremo climbing to the top. Of 450 on Mathers. Oh, oh wait. wait. Here McKay comes. with the poison oh. Rana. Super kick here by McKay. And now No gets caught with a kick. And uh oh. Could oh. be a splash mountain. Could be a splash mountain. Oh, oh my God. Oh dear God, he put him through those boards and those chairs. And I think that that is the end of Dylan McKay in this matchup. Marcus Mathers is the last hope for Wasted Youth. Watch the impact Dylan McKay through two boards and a pile of chairs. And Mathers has to get to his feet because now he's got to take on 
both members of Los Macisos. He's caught in a powerbomb. Well through here. Gets tossed. The other cinema who just drove him on his head. Oh my God, Mathers kicked out. Somehow Marcus Mathers is still in this. Oh my God. Like a Tiger Driver 91 and that's it. The winners of the match, Los Macizos. Unbelievable action we've seen here. Watch this. Marcus Mathers did all he could, but it wasn't enough. A variation of the Tiger Driver 91, almost in a running Still position. Still okay, still out on the floor. Wow. What can you say about this? Waste of group did everything they could, but in the end, the ones getting their arms raised, Carlos Macisos, Ciclope, and Miedo Extremo. And we still have one more match yet to come. Still our main event. And believe it or not, it may be the tamest of them all. But not the least exciting, if anything, this has been the match I've most been looking forward well, to. Well, truly, the stipulation for our main event is, do you want to see a banger? Basically. Sign of respect here. Yeah. Well, they still blood together, and, and that, in some ways, makes them brothers. They have that connection now. What a night we've had here in Boonton, New Jersey. JCW uncensored. And it truly has been uncensored. The wildest ride we've ever seen here in Jersey Championship Wrestling. And the cherry on top, as it were, is gonna be our main event. Yeah, I think, I might be wrong, but I think that this match, our main event, was actually the first match announced for this event before we quite understood what JCW uncensored meant. And as I was saying, in my opinion, the, the stipulation, the, the gimmick, if you will, of this particular match is just truly two of the best in the world meeting in the ring for the very first time. We've had a real proud. wild night here in Uncensored. Boonton, New Jersey, are y'all ready for your main event? that was announced for this event. And what a match we are gonna see here. This young lady who we've seen grow in this industry into the superstar that she is today is taking on one of the biggest challenges of her career. Just a few short years ago, we thought her career was over. 
multiple time champion in, in stardom. Making her debut here for JCW. I know all of us started coming up with a list of matches that we wanted to see, and quite honestly, this was at the top of mind. I am so excited to be here and to call it Jungle Fiona. Just the undeniable charisma against the Russian Dynamite. Who, if you recall, and I know that sometimes, this well, let's take an MLJ. It is set for one ball. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, senior Jersey Championship Wrestling official, Mr. Adam Golf. Yeah. Introducing Price in the corner to my right, fighting out of Moscow, Russia, she is Russian Dynamite, Masha. that she, I know, has been waiting for because it, it, just, it just speaks so much to the style of wrestling that she loves to do. Jungle Kiona, of course, longtime star with Stardom. And when she left Stardom now is out on her own, is freelancing. Again, we saw all the possibilities for matches. And it is so exciting. I'm so happy to have her here. But right now, Masha in control with the headlock. And uh, Masha, of course, was uh, training under the tutelage of the uh, famous, world famous, probably the biggest star in the history, Joseph Perez. The, the biggest star, Nick. Let's not mince yeah. words here. A yeah. superstar. Yeah, one half of the Crush Gals, Chigusa Nagayo, and uh, Jungle Kiona, uh, again, making her return after two years. You have to figure... Um, again... Anytime you want to tell me that women's wrestling doesn't draw, I will draw I will draw your attention to to someone like Nagayo who, who is just the was the biggest star in Japan. And I'm I'm sorry that I'm ranting now, but it's just crap to say that. And we are seeing two of the biggest stars of today go hold for hold oh, in yeah. the middle of the ring. The crush girls make no uh, um, doubts about it. Linus Asuka and Chigusa and Nagaya were pop culture icons during the 80s. And uh, two of the biggest stars in the history of that country. And uh, Joe Kiona, I just want to mention for a moment, um, she's making a return after two years, and, and you have to figure um, a stable mate of hers, uh, the late great Hana Kimura, must be looking down and smiling that Jungle has decided to uh, restart her career. Um, I'm getting choked up, as I mentioned. Here. And to me, the most interesting thing about Jumbo coming back to wrestling and doing it now on her own freelancing, she is not associated with any one company, is the, the one criticism that has ever been leveled that I have seen from fans towards Jumbo is she, she really just, she never quite delivered when it came to the big one. She never managed to win a big singles championship, but now she is out on her own. She is challenging presumably all over the United States. We could see her become a champion here. We absolutely could. She's uh, 
involved in some prestigious tournaments coming up uh, on this extended tour of the United States. Oh, and she we seen some potential three matches, not just against wi other women, but against some of the men as well. Oh, and there is the power of Jungle Kiona taking the Russian Dynamite down. As the fans start to chant the Jungle Power, Jungle Kiona here gets a bit of hair, a handful of hair there, and just twisting it around. And uh, she, let me tell you something, this is someone with that killer instinct. There's no doubt about that. Jungle Kiona does not lack a, any, not, not, there's not one bone in her body that doesn't have a killer instinct. Truly, and just making up for lost time now. Absolutely, what a, what a, a, a honor, privilege, and a pleasure it is to call this with you, Veda. Seeing Jungle Kiona's return here, as now she's got a beautiful cravat here on Masha Slamovich. Goes into a snap here, transitions right into that, now into a surfboard. And cranking away at the arms here. Yeah, and it is it's not often that we see Masha in such extended jeopardy. But truly, she is... Whoa, Kiona Look at rolling this. through. Right into an ankle lock. And Masha able to escape. Nope, gets the roundhouse block. Uh, uh, Jungle Kiona says, no, no. Wait a minute, is she going? Yeah, drunk, dragging through leg whip. And Masha holding her ankle. Jungle now back to the leg. Seems like she's being very calculating, very deliberate here. Stepping through, cinching on the half crab, and sitting all the way back on Masha. Masha trying to grab a handful of hair. Well, Masha's doing whatever it takes uh, not to tap out, basically. But as you can see from this position, Jungle, uh, the way she has the, the, uh, the new guard there on the half crab, and now she drops with her weight right on the hip. And truly, Masha. she was forced to break the hold because Masha made it to the ropes. But Masha breaks out, series of strikes. <laughs> and Kiona. Like nothing, look at this. This is one tough young lady. Are you kidding me? With abs of steel. <laughs> so look Kiona here now. Oh, gets caught right there. And a jackknife, good catcher, oh, no. Very, very close. And now Masha, big headbutt on Jungle Kiona. Masha trying to Look at that. change open hand direction slap. of this match, keep it in control. Well, I think she's gonna try to overpower her, that may be part of her game here. Whoa. Oh, that's caught here. Here comes Jungle Kiona with a Larry in the corner. And now, Irish whip it to the opposite corner. Here comes Jungle Jonah. Oh. Big clothesline. And she tells the audience she's going for one more. And another Irish whip. Yeah, I think we're gonna see another one. Here we go. Here comes Jungle Jonah. Oh, no. Russia. Puts up the boot. Look at this. Wow. Just rolled her right there. She hit the back of her head on the turnbuckles. Now Masha connects with that big knee. And a big boot to the side of the head. Kick to the chest and a clothesline. Look at this. Now into a cross face. Has barred the arm. Is under the chin. And is pulling up. A lot of pressure here. If Jungle can make it, she's relatively close to the ropes. Yeah, she she's could make it, but sometimes that's the thing, and, I, and Veda, you could probably attest to. Sometimes you're in such pain that you almost close your eyes and you don't see right there the ropes. Yeah, and Masha is is wrenching on the neck, on the hair, and Kiona's arm was almost trapped underneath herself. Finally, able to break free. Yeah, as I was saying, Vader, sometimes I guess the pain can overtake you and you don't realize your position in the ring. And thankfully, Jungle was able to do that. But here she comes. Look at this. Big clothesline. Rolls through here. Oh! And 
right there by Tango Corona with the clothesline. Oh, and Masha. Masha. Masha, hand on the ropes. Yep, she knew her position there. And the force of that lariat propelled Masha all the way across the ring. Big clothesline. Duck under here. Now a sleeper hold here by Masha. Now she's got it cinched in pretty good. The thing is she may have caught some hair. So now if you've got some hair wrapped around your throat as well as her forearm, that could choke her right out. Oh, and it looks like Jungle, the lights could go yeah. out. Well, Jungle says no. Starting to throw some elbow strikes. Here we go. Now Masha with the front neck lock. It's a very basic but effective maneuver is the front neck lock. And now, especially now when you got a body scissors in. Yeah, just dragging Jungle down to the mat and grinding in. Looks like the ref is checking, making sure she's, she could be out, but, oh, no, she's still in it. Jungle Kiona yep. still fighting. Fighting to get out of this front neck lock here. Wait a minute. Oh, get into her no feet. way. Look Jungle power activated, switching the grip, and somehow Jungle Kiona has not only escaped the submission, but turned it into a suplex. And now Jungle Kiona's freed up. Can she match the for cover? Lateral press doesn't hook the leg. It was almost out of desperation. But, and you see the training that Masha received in Marvelous. As she bridges out, that is something that you see a lot of the, a lot of, one of the most basic things you see uh, in training in the dojos in Japan that the young women learn is to bridge out of a pin. So now, instinctively, Masha did that. Kiona holding on to the arm to keep Masha close for these short run lariats. And wow. a third, doubling Masha in half. She folded, kind of got her in a double leg pin there, but Masha able to kick out. And Jungle Kiona now trying to figure out what to do next with Masha. You always have to kind of think as a competitor, you always kind of have to think two, three moves ahead. What's it going to take to finally put out your opponent? Rachel says, checking on Masha. Masha still though with it. Kiona dragging her back to her feet. Masha breaks out. Brownhouse and look oh, at this. Oh. Kiona with the floor. Brownhouse kick to the head. Loving the action here as we go back to the replay. Series of forearms, and look at that. An Urkin ducks under the roundhouse, and a big forearm right there. But look at that kick right there. Puts down Jungle Kiona. And now both women struggling to their feet, trying to climb to the ropes. Use the support of the ropes to get to their feet. And now the first one up is Jungle Kiona, but here comes Masha. And now they clash. Oh. It is Jungle getting the better of that exchange. She hooks the far leg. And no, not enough. Masha's still in it, but Jungle Kiona fired up. There we go. Traditional body slam. Big, big slam, and Kiona. And now, Kiona headed, looking. Yeah, headed on the outside and to the top rope. But Masha with a slap. And that's Masha getting to the top rope here, nailing with the forearms to the back. Looks like she's setting up for a superplex here. Jungle fighting it. This is dangerous. This oh. could be bad. Oh. oh my goodness. Masha with a headbutt, series of headbutts right Masha here. Masha Slamovich always willing and able to use her own body as a weapon. Now it's superplex. Jungle came down hard, Masha with the cover. No. And still not enough. 
and Masha trying to figure out what's it gonna take to put down Jungle Kiona for the three. As she gets her up by her hair. Now grabbing her from the back of her tights. Here we go. Looking for that white knight driver, that package pile driver variation, but Jungle. Ducking the kick again. Oh, oh caught wow. the kick. Oh! Into, looks like a sit out power bomb right there. And no, she tried to hold down the shoulders, but it wasn't enough. You can see the look on Jungle Kiona's face. She thought for sure that was enough to defeat Masha Slamovich. Slamovich still in it, but Jungle, again with a handful of hair. Getting ready with that lariat again. Oh, oh, the spinning back kick! Go for the cover. Oh! Wow. I thought that was it. I thought that was free. But now Masha looking to finally end it here. Is she gonna finally hit that white knight driver? There it is! There it is. Masha! And that's it. Hard fought victory here for Masha Slamovic. The winner of the match, Masha Slamovic. And the crowd here in the Elks Lodge on their feet, showing their appreciation for these two athletes. Watch the replay here. Hooks her by the legs there, and white knife driver right there. Drops her on the top of her head, lateral press. Nice extension across both shoulders and gets the cover. Yeah, the White Knight driver does it again for Masha. She has put away so many wrestlers with that maneuver. But Jungle Kiona, even in defeat, even in defeat, proving that she has not lost a step. And, and you could see she said one more. She said one more to Masha Slimovich. I think she wants a rematch, and I hope I hope we get to see it here at JCW selfishly just so we get to call it, Nick. Absolutely. You can hear the chance of please come back. We are all happy to have Jungle Kiana back in professional wrestling. Absolutely. To have her debut here in JCW. And yes, hopefully we do see her back. I think there's a pretty good chance. Oh, I actually, I was given news by JCW officials. Oh? Atlantic City weekend, October 8th, October 9th. Sunday, October 9th, we see Jungle Kiona once again in the JCW ring. Jungle Kiona in the carousel room. What a world. And, and what a show. JCW Uncensored. Hashtag JCW Uncensored. Folks, we want to hear what you thought of this show. We want to thank you folks watching live on YouTube. And we hope to join you in Atlantic City. Hope you join us for October 9th. Good night from here in Boonton, New Jersey.